Okay, so um, active transport, normal, normal like diffusion, you go from more to less. Active transport, you're doing the opposite. You're going from less to more. You're going against your concentration gradient, against what nature would want to happen. Um, let me, uh, oh, let me get my cursor over here. Um, I'll come back to this slide. I want to, I want to start with this slide. I think this is a good, this is a good like to the point comparing passive and active transport. So normal diffusion molecules go from more to less down their concentration gradient. Facilitated diffusion, you have a protein that helps bring these things these things across because they can't cross the cell membrane on their own. Now you have to know what would allow things to go through just without a protein versus what's going to require a protein. So what the, there's two things that primarily determine whether a thing can come across the membrane on its, on its own. Whether it's polar, meaning charged, polar slash charged, or non-polar slash, uh, I don't know, no charge. So non-polar slash no charge and size. So if you are um, non-polar and small, you can just come right through. So if you're something like uh, oxygen, oxygen is just two atoms together, so it's small and it's nonpolar. The electrons are equally shared throughout the bond in oxygen, so it can come right through. Now if you are, so the opposite of this, if you're polar or have some sort of charge, so polar, or maybe you, or you're like an ion, like, you know, got a positive or negative charge, or you're large, maybe you're like um, glucose or something, you're gonna need the help of a protein. You can still go from more to less, you just need the help of um, some sort of channel. So the aquaporin is the classic example. Water is polar, it, water is small, but because it's polar, it can't come through the cell membrane very quickly, so we assist it, we facilitate it, its diffusion with a protein. Okay. This was a channel protein. The one that, um, uh, it reminds me of like a little clip. That's a uh, carrier protein, okay? Now then active transport, you're doing the opposite. So with passive transport, we went from more to less. Active transport, you're doing the opposite. Here, you went from more inside the cell to less. That doesn't, that doesn't naturally, um, or I'm sorry, you're going from more to less, you're doing this. So you're here, you're doing this. And then here, you're doing this. Like you already, you normally wants to go this way, but now you're going against nature. So to do that, you have to put in energy. The energy currency of the cell is ATP. ATP is what's gonna power this process. All right, so that's like the really like the big picture overview of uh, of, the, of active transport. Getting into some of the details, uh, I think I said everything here. Let's talk about facilitate diffusion. Yep. Active transport, you're going against the concentration gradient, uh, and this is like think about it. if cells couldn't do active transport then the inside of the cell would be the same as the outside of the cell, right? Like it really wouldn't be that different. So that's why active transport's important. It's important that we have the ability to, to maintain these concentration gradients. And I'll, and I'll give you a, a couple examples of how a cell will utilize those gradients. And then throughout the year, we'll talk about why it's important. But, uh, and the energy comes from ATP, okay? All right, um, the key example that I want you to know you'll learn about in every single biology class, even psychology classes, you learn about the sodium potassium pump. Super important idea. So I want you to know the details of this. And um, all right, this is the story. Outside the cell, I'll draw this a little bit bigger. Sodium concentration is high outside the cell. Inside the cell, sodium concentration is low. Now it's the opposite for potassium. Outside the cell, potassium concentration is low. And inside the cell, 
potassium concentration is high. I have learned this and forgotten this, learned this, forgotten this, learned, and then finally I learned it. And you know how I remembered it? Imagine you're a cell, and the blood is past the your, the blood is going past you, and the sodium's in the blood, and and in that sodium in that in that uh, blood is sodium, and you say, Nah, bro, just let it go past you. You you have, you don't want the sodium. It's low. You say Nah, bro. It ain't nah. <laughs> I, I've never forgotten it since. Like, so uh, <laughs> you say Nah, bro. That's why it's high outside the cell low inside the cell. And then potassium is just the other one. You can think, okay, okay, and you just let it in. Okay, and you just, I'll, I'll take that. All right, anyways, so that's, got on, that's the starting point. We want to maintain that. So how we maintain that, because nature wants to disrupt that. Naturally, sodium wants to come in the cell, so we have to actively keep pumping the sodium outside the cell to maintain that gradient. So this is where we use a, uh, a carrier protein where it's kind of unique because on, on one side of it, it has a special receptor that only binds sodium. And on the left side, you have a special site that only bind potassium. Now this is what's also interesting. The sodium potassium pump, every time it works, it's gonna release three sodiums and it brings in it brings in three sodiums. It, or I'm sorry, it releases three sodiums, and it brings in two potassiums. How you can remember that? You release one sodium, extra sodium, than potassium. Is there's one more letter that goes with sodium than potassium? Anyways, let me let me run through how this works, and I'm going to do that by comparing it to this binder clip. So when it's like this. This binder clip is closed. If I want to make this binder clip open, I have to put in energy, right? To open up this, this uh, to get these sodium ions out of the cell, we have to use ATP. So we do a process called phosphorylation. So phosphorylation, we take one of the phosphates from ATP. ATP, the P is for phosphate, triphosphate, we take an ATP from phosphate, it then becomes ADP, and by attaching that phosphate to the protein, something about that process will give the energy to make that protein do this. For it to open up and spit out the three sodiums to the outside of the cell. Okay? That way you keep that concentration. Now, this, now my channel is open like this. And then from outside the cell, we can then bind our potassium. So now our potassiums go to their slots. So my, my, my protein's like this. Now, do I have to put in energy to make this go back to the original starting point? No, right? Now it's just, if I just let go, it does that. So this is why this protein will then just open back up and spit the potassium inside the cell. You don't require energy to do that because this that to go back to the starting position like with my binder clip it you like you like spring loaded it by adding that phosphate to begin with okay phosphorylation that is a that's like a common theme of how proteins work we take in we take one of the phosphates from ATP we phosphorylate it do phosphorylation that's how we change like the shape of these proteins it's like how you get the energy to open and close the door Anyways, um, so you release three sodiums and you bring in two potassiums. So think Na, bro, and K, I'll take that. And there's one more letter in, in Na than there is in K, so that's why it's three for two. Okay, there's another um, detail that um, with sodium potassium pumped, I'm gonna show you later. It has to do with the charge gradient, the, uh, the, they call it the, uh, the voltage potential. But I want to I want to move on to something else and come back to that. All right. So again, know know this process. It'll be worth your time to have that memorized. You'll see it in every biology class from here till when you stop doing biology classes. So maybe for some of you, it's just here. But uh, anyways, all right. 
went over this slide. Yeah, membrane potential, the voltage potential. So if I have a cell, outside the cell, it is more positive than on the inside. The inside of the cell is actually more negatively charged. Anybody know why? Why would the cell be more negatively charged? Think about um, those biomolecules. Like, uh, you know, what about those bi I haven't taught you this. I, I don't necessarily expect you to know it, but like, anybody know like, what's going on? No. DNA and proteins will naturally have a slight negative charge. And there's more DNA and proteins inside the cell than outside. That's why uh, the cell's gonna naturally have a more negative charge. Now, I showed you that sodium potassium pump, and I released from the cell three Na pluses, and I brought in the cell two K pluses. So, follow me here. If I release three positive charges, three plus ones, and I only brought in two positives, that's more negative. I, I'm adding more positive charge outside the cell, and I'm keeping more negative inside the cell. So that's another way that the cell will, will keep itself more negative. And um, we call this difference in charge the membrane potential, where there's a difference in voltage. Voltage is referring to like the, the amount of anions and cations across the membrane. Remember anions? N, there's two N's, so there's more negative. Anions referring to negative. Cation, there's like a T there. That T looks like a positive sign. Okay, are we good with that? Questions? All right. So, you're like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, so, if we combine the membrane potential along with the concentration gradient, we get an electrochemical gradient where you could have where the chemical force can come from the difference in um, uh, the ion concentrations, meaning like you have outside the cell, you have more sodium than inside the cell. That would be the concentration gradient. The electrical force would be where outside the cell is more positive than on the inside of the cell. So they're related to each other, but there's a technical difference. One is like the actual concentration, like molarity. The other is just referring to the charge. Okay, so let me show you um, a good example of this. So this is especially common in plants, is the proton pump. And I think this is so cool. So a proton pump is a protein pump where we use ATP, we do phosphorylation, meaning we phosphorylate, we take a phosphate from our ATP, add it to, the be a little phosphate added to this proton pump. The energy of that process, somewhat similarly like me doing this with the, the clip here, will cause these hydrogen ions to get pumped to the outside of the cell. They're going against their concentration gradient. They're going from, whoa, they're going from less to more, okay? And by doing that, you do two things. You set up an electrochemical gradient. The chemical part is the fact that there is more H pluses outside the cell. The electro part coming from all the positive charge you're adding by pumping those protons outside the cell. Okay? Now, you're like, what could we do with that? That sounds weird. Well, there's something called co-transport. Um, have you ever, like, shown up at, like, a... Well, maybe like once you get to college, you'll do this, you know, like you're at your friends like, hey, come over to my apartment and like you show up and there's a stinking gate or you're delivering pizzas at Papa John's as a college job like me and somebody orders a pizza and they don't put the stinking gate code on there. And you're like, what do you want me to do? Like James Bond my way over this gate into your like, what do you expect from me here? And so you're like, what's a boy to do? Well, a car comes in and so you just like. You kind of like tail that car through the gate. You know what I'm talking about? That's what we do in co-transport. So here's how it works. We had the proton pump where we pumped all of these H pluses outside the cell. 
So the H pluses want to come inside the cell. They have the gate code, right? They can come inside the cell on their own. And the sucrose is, is the Papa. It's Papa John, Papa J. Papa John just, just sneaks on in with the, soup, with the H plus to get inside the cell. Because inside the cell, there's a higher concentration of sucrose than on the outside. So sucrose doesn't naturally want to come in to the cell. But we need it in the cell. We need more sucrose inside the cell than outside. So we got to like smuggle it in by using the, uh, the uh, concentration grade of the H+. Um, think of it like a water wheel or like a hamster wheel. Like if a hamster is running on a wheel, you use the energy of the hamster running to like run electricity. Or a water wheel, you pump up the water, like this would be the H plus would be the water, to a higher spot. And then when the water comes back down, it's, it's like the H plus coming through the transporter. You use the energy of that, that potential energy, to, to fuel something else. In this case, we're fueling the sucrose coming in the cell. I hope that makes sense, but I think it's really cool. I don't know. It's kind of wild, like the, like how complicated that is, like that the cell can like couple two different processes together like that is pretty cool to me. Anyways, um, let me go back and make sure I got everything here. So yeah, those electrogenic pumps, like the sodium potassium pump or the, uh, the hydrogen pump, or I'm sorry, the proton pump, those are electrogenic pumps. We can use that stored energy to do some sort of work. Okay. Um, yeah, proton pump is mainly plants, fungi, and bacteria. Whereas sodium potassium pump, that's really just animal cells. Yeah. Yeah, this one? Oh, this one here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me show you guys everything in this one. So, um, yeah, this would be the fancier way of saying it. That transport protein, we couple the downhill diffusion, normally of like, in, in the example I gave you, the protons want to go from more to less. We couple that with then the uphill transport of the other solute. The other solute here, the uphill, was the sucrose. The sucrose had to go from less to more. And that's like a main way how plants get nutrients into their cells is through that proton pump. They, they, they basically smuggle in, they bring in their, plants bring in their Papa John's by uh, having proton pumps, by like bringing in the nutrients through um, uh, the gate of uh, potassium, or of, uh, I'm sorry, hydrogen ions. Okay, any questions? Uh, yeah, so that's it for 5.4. 5.5 is the last section in this unit. It's really pretty short. It's just like me giving you a couple examples. So um, that's really about it for unit two. So we still, we're gonna be doing a fun lab next class where we, um, uh, you're gonna be building mazes with Legos in slime mold. It'll be pretty cool. Um, and then we'll have, we'll have a, a unit two uh, review day. So, all right, I'll stop.